Hi friends, as always, I'm very excited to see you here. If you're meeting for the first time, I'm Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication, research and statistics on this channel. To stay updated with the latest on this channel, I urge you to consider subscribing to the channel. Thematic analysis looks for themes and patterns in qualitative data. According to Braun and Clark in 2006, this is the first method that qualitative researchers should learn as it provides core skills for future qualitative data analysis. Let's see how to do thematic analysis in this video. Braun and Clark differentiate between two levels of thematic analysis, the semantic and the latent. In the semantic level, we look for surface or explicit themes, while in latent analysis, we look for underlying ideas, assumptions, conceptualizations. Virginia Braun and Victoria Clark in 2006 proposed a six phase guide which is very useful for conducting thematic analysis. Most qualitative data are recorded as transcripts and field notes or video and analyzed using inductive, holistic and narrative strategies. One popular form of qualitative analysis is coding. Its main task is developing the analytical categories and using them to generate themes, narratives, or even a grounded theory of the phenomena. Thematic analysis is the process of identifying patterns or themes within qualitative data. According to Virginia Braun and Victoria Clark, it is the first qualitative method that should be learned as it provides core skills that will be useful for conducting many other kinds of analysis. It is a method rather than a methodology. The goal of a thematic analysis is to identify themes or patterns in the data that the researcher considers important or interesting and use these themes to address the research or say something about an issue. This is much more than simply summarizing the data. A good thematic analysis interprets and makes a sense of the data. Braun and Clark distinguish between two levels of themes. Semantic themes look for explicit or surface meanings of the data and the analyst is not looking for anything beyond what a participant has said or what has been written. Latent themes identify or examine the underlying ideas, assumptions and conceptualizations and ideologies that shape the semantic content. Braun and Clark provide a six-phase guide which is a very useful framework for conducting thematic analysis. In step one, we become familiar with the data. Step two, generates initial codes. Step 3 searches for the themes. We review the themes. Step 5 we define the themes and step 6 is about the write-up. The first step in any qualitative analysis is reading and rereading the transcripts, interview extract etc that forms the data. The researcher should be very familiar with the entire body of data or data corpus that is all the interviews or any other data before they go any further. At this stage, it is useful to make notes and jot down early impressions. Step 2 is about generating initial codes. Here data is organized in a meaningful and systematic way. Coding reduces lots of data into small chunks of meaning. If we are addressing specific research questions, we use theoretical thematic analysis. Here we do not code every piece of text. We may use open coding where we do not have preset codes, but the codes are developed and modified as we work through the coding process. In an inductive thematic analysis, on the other hand, we use line-by-line -line coding 
to code every single line of the text. We have some general ideas of code in step 1. In this step, we generate initial codes which we modify as we go. Qualitative data analytics software, for example Atlas or Envivo may be useful. However, other tools like Microsoft Excel can be used to code and identify themes. In the third step, we search for themes. There are no hard and fast rules about what makes a theme. A theme is categorized by its significance. If you have a very small data set, there may be considerable overlap between the coding stage and this stage of identifying preliminary themes. At the end of this step, the codes are organized into broader themes that address the research question. In the fourth phase of reviewing themes, we review, modify and develop the preliminary themes that we identified in step 3. These questions are very important. Do the themes make sense? Does the data support the themes? Am I trying to fit too much into a theme? If themes overlap, are they really separate themes? Also important is to know if there are sub-themes or other themes. During the definition of the theme process, this is the final refinement of the themes. The, and the main aim is to identify the essence of what each theme is about. It is important to ask yourself, what is the theme saying? If there are sub-themes, how do they interact and relate to the main theme? How do the themes relate to each other? This is an example of writing the thematic analysis. All the themes identified can be related to a central theme of attachment. Attachment became apparent as a theme after the first interview and was discussed and described by all participants, although the word attachment was never used. Rather, participants discussed love for the animal in the lay sense of the word attachment. In a recent articulation, Braun and Clark redefined the six-phase process as number one, data familiarization and writing familiarization notes, secondly, systematic data coding, thirdly, generating initial themes from coded and collated data, developing and reviewing themes, refining, defining and naming themes, and sixthly, writing the report. This phase approach is not intended to be followed rigidly. Let's discuss the pitfalls. Thematic analysis refers not to a single approach but rather to a cluster of sometimes conflicting approaches, divergent both in procedure and underlying philosophy, but which share an interest in capturing patterns in data. Demonstrating coding reliability and the avoidance of bias is illogical, incoherent and ultimately meaningless in reflexive thematic analysis according to Braun and Clark. Thematic analysis is best thought of as an umbrella term for or a fuzzy set of approaches that share some characteristics in common, which is analysis through coding and theme development, some degree of theoretical and research design flexibility, a focus on semantic and latent meaning, but can differ significantly in both underlying paradigmatic and epistemological values and in procedures. Despite not having inbuilt theory, thematic analysis can never be conducted in a theoretical vacuum. Researchers always make assumptions about what data represent, what can be claimed on the basis of these data, and what constitutes meaningful knowledge. It is sometimes wrongly assumed that only deductive thematic analysis requires discussion of theory. It is also wrongly assumed that thematic analysis is only a descriptive or data reduction method in which data patterns are paraphrased or summarized. It is an interpretative activity undertaken by a researcher who is situated in particular social, cultural, historical, disciplinary, political and ideological positionings. Researchers ultimately tell their story about the data. 
reflexive thematic analysis makes a distinction between codes and themes. Codes can be thought of as entities that capture one observation and display one facet. Themes in contrast are like multifaceted crystals. They capture multiple observations or facets. In many thematic analysis approaches, these terms are wrongly used interchangeably or coding is conceptualized as a process of allocating data to predetermined themes. It is important to distinguish between themes and topics. Data topics or domains are not themes. Themes are patterns of shared meaning united by a central concept or idea. A common mistake is to use the main interview questions as the themes. Typically, this reflects the fact that the data have been summarized and organized rather than analyzed. Themes are not diamonds scattered in the sand and found by the researcher. They are actively created by the researcher through their interpretative engagement with data. Theme generation is a creative and active process where the researcher is central. Thanks for staying along friends. As always, it was a delight having you here. I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.